Okay, so good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being here to listen to a teenage talking about a serious problem that affects our planet right now. Global warming. Global warming? Um, boring, you may say. Well, indeed, it's not a new topic, but it's still super important. To be honest, I care about it more than you guys. Why? Because I will likely live longer and suffer the consequences. Okay, so the planet's temperature is rising at an unprecedented, unprecedented rate, and the effects of this are already being across the whole world. So today, in this speech, we will discuss the causes and the effects of global warming, and what we can do, do to stop it. We will also enter the misconception about global warming, which is that it will lead to the next ice age. So firstly, let us examine the causes of global warming in more detail. As mentioned earlier, global warming is caused by human activities. These activities involve, primarily involve the emission of the greenhouse gases, such as carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and these gases trap heat in the atmosphere. The primary source of these gases is the burning of fossil fuels, like coal, oil, and the natural gas to produce electricity. Heat buildings and fuel transportation, deforestation, and land use change are also significant contributors to greenhouse gas emissions. According to NASA, human activity has caused Earth's temperature to rise by one degree Celsius over the past century. Well, they may not seem like much, but it is having a significant impact on the planet. One of the most significant impacts of global warming is the melting of the ice caps. The polar ice caps is leading to a rise in floating in low-lying areas, which is affecting millions of people worldwide. In addition, the melting of the ice gas is a, causes the loss of the habitat for many species of animals. In addition to the polar bears and the penguins, so that most of us know, many other species of animals are being affected as well. For example, some species of birds are migrating earlier or later due to the change in the temperature and the weather patterns. And some species of fish are also being affected, which can lead to the decline in population. The loss of the coral reefs is also affecting the survival of many marine species. Other land animals, like the elephants and the reindeer, are being affected by changes in their natural habitats and food resources. So another effect of global warming is the increase in extreme weather conditions. The rising in temperatures is leading to more frequent and severe heat waves, droughts, and hurricanes. This is causing damage to the crops, homes, and infrastructure, and is leading to the displacement of communities. For example, in 2017, Hurricane Harvey had been over 125 billion in damages in Texas, USA. So, do you feel the same in Shanghai? So, in Shanghai, you probably feel that Shanghai's summer has been a little bit more warm. Can you do a show? Okay, I saw a lot of people raise their hands. Okay, yeah, this is my feel. This is my true feeling. I think so too. So, furthermore, global warming also causes more forest fires. Uh, research indicates that only 1% of fires are caused by natural causes. The main factors is caused by humans, like global warming's effect, so which will dry out the climate and provide more opportunities for forest fires. So forest fires are strong, destructive, hard to deal with. So as the temperature rises, the fire will become more fierce. For example, the news of Australia bushfires attracted a lot of people's attention. So, since like September 2019, after killing at least like 26 people and gorging millions of trees and animals, it was finally put off on March 4, 2020, nine months after it began. So forests are renewable resources with the longer growth cycles, and it takes a long time to recover after fire. If the land is damaged by recover after a fire, if the land is damaged by the fire forest, it will become more barren or even bare. So also, forests are the home of the wild animals. So if the forest fire always happens, 
like they will lose their home, they will be homeless, and there will be food shortages. So it breaks the balance of the food chain. And it also causes not only global warming, but it also causes the damage to the whole world. In addition, global warming has led to the re-emergence of the many pathogens, such as bacteria and viruses, which is a huge problem for people's health. So take malaria as an example. Malaria likes you to stay in hot or warm conditions. So the global warming will let the viruses become more active. Like as carbon dioxide increases the density of the virus, they don't even need to have a transfer period to take a break. Recently, the spread of malaria to higher latitudes in East Africa and Latin America is connected to the greenhouse effect. Also, global warming will stimulate the emergence of new viruses. Researchers estimate that the emergence of new viruses is because of human interruption of the environment. And the virus is nursed by climate change. So these unknown viruses used to stay in wild animals, but now scientists estimate that 90% of living things on Earth that are insured by human. And 5,000 or so viruses are unknown to us. So we can now ensure that we can always make uh, vaccines fast enough to save people. We are still remember COVID-19. Just COVID-19 is it's a, it's a pandemic. So everybody, a lot of people still suffer from the pain of losing lover once in this pandemic. Imagine if we were going to go through this again, maybe even more than once every decade. Well, if, if we are still ignoring cold global warming, we will get in the deep trouble. So the situation is there. Yes, some people argue that global warming is not a problem because it's just a natural before the next ice age. The argument is flawed. Well, it is true that the Earth has gone through the cycles of warming and cooling in the past. The current warming and warming trade is different. It is happening at a much faster rate than ever before. And it's caused by human activity, not natural causes. We are currently experiencing an interglacial period. About, after about 90,000 years, the ice age will come. During an ice age, the Earth's temperature drops and the polar bear and the polar caps is expand. However, global warming is causing the opposite effect. The polar ice caps are melting, leading to a rise in sea levels. The rising sea levels, well, the increase in temperature is also causing change in ocean currents, which can affect weather patterns and lead to the more extreme weather events. Because of global warming, the ice age will be delayed. In general, ice age will always happen at a certain moment. It is regular. So it will still come even some, some factors influence the ice age. But now, scientists estimate that it will be delayed in the future. Therefore, now you can imagine how humans have a great impact on the ice age. Someone claims that the snow almost covered the whole world when the ice age comes. Living things, including humans, will die in during this time. Why not prevent this ice age from coming? Let people stay longer. Sounds logical? Well, the argument is also flawed. Well, it seems like we can exist longer if the ice age does not come. But people will pay the price. For example, too much carbon dioxide increases the raising of sea levels. The raising sea levels will let the humans don't have enough food to eat because they cannot grow crops because we don't have soil, we don't have the land to stay, stay with. And so people will start to death. And people are going to disappear from this world because we break the balance of nature. It is unavoidable and we need to face the ice age coming. But the ice age is not always a bad thing for us or other living things. With the rapid development of the technology and AI, it is possible that we could not die when the ice age comes. It would just be much harder than now to survive. It is a challenging. But it is possible to find a solution. Like now, we discover the energy, new energy resources and we are constantly to explore. Good breakthroughs are coming. So I just hope like, we can realize the severity of global warming and survive until technology save us. Besides those who think global warming is not a problem, some other people doubt. Do humans really have a great impact on global warming compared to natural factors? The answer is yes.
Any influences we have, we have did to this environment will be reflected back to us. We already knew from the previous work that global warming caused damage to our world. We just didn't know how much. I think this is the true feeling of most of people. So today, let's talk about why we, human beings, matter. So the increase of the global warming would destabilize the water cycle. The water cycle is an important and delicate system for transporting water sources to our land, which keeps our environment habitable. And what human does have a great impact on the water cycle. Recently, scientists have been experimenting a determinant for the salinity of the each ocean area. So they are using changes in salt in the ocean to estimate how much ocean wa waters can move from the equator to the poles in the 1970s. The water cycle leaves special marks on the ocean salt, so researchers can estimate that how the cycle changes over time. According to the result of the experiment, too much greenhouse gases change and broken the system of the water cycle. So it, this experiment showed that more fresh water has moved than people estimated. In other words, just like water area getting wetter and the dry area getting drier, it's unbalanced and unpredictable, which in turn affects every one of us. So there are many things that we can do to stop disaster from happening. One of the most significant ways that we can reduce our carbon footprint is by transition to renewable sources. So in 2020, renewable energy accounted for 72 of power cap capacity additions globally. This is a positively trade, but we need to accelerate the transition to renewable energy in order to meet the goals of the Paris Agreement, which aims to keep global warming below 2 degrees Celsius. To support renewable energy, we can install the solar panels to our home or businesses, invest in renewable energy companies, and advocate for government policies that support renewable resources to like, the development. So governments can also take the reaction by the renewable sources development, such as like feeding in tariffs and renewable portfolio status. In addition, governments can provide incentive for business to reduce their carbon footprint, such as tax credits and the investments in the renewable energy. To reduce our carbon footprint, there are some re specific reactions that we can take. For example, using energy efficient appliances and the LED light bulbs, turning off the lights and electronics when not in use, and adjusting the sources to conserve energy, and, and they can all make a, dip, make a big difference. So we can also reduce our carbon footprint by supporting public transportation. And in 2090, transportation accounted for 29% of greenhouse gases emissions in the United States. And by using public transportation, carpooling, or working and biking, we can reduce our food emissions, carbon emissions, and improve air quality. So in addition to these solutions, we must also enter the issue of the carbon pricing. Carbon pricing is a market-based mechanisms through the carbon tax and the cap and the trade system. So this approach creates an economic carbon footprint and invest in renewable energy sources. Several countries, including Canada, China, and the European Union, have already implemented the carbon pricing schemes and more countries are expected to follow the suit. Another important solution is to invest in carbon capture and the storage the CCS technology. So the CCS technology involves capturing carbon dioxide emissions from power plants and the other industrial sources and storing them underground. This technology has the potential to reduce greenhouse gases emissions significantly. And several countries, including United States and Canada, has already been invested in CCS research and development. So in conclusion, the global warming is a complex problem that requires a multifaceted solution. We need to work together to reduce our carbon footprint, transition to renewable energy, reduce food waste to support public transportation. We must also implement carbon pricing and invest in CCS technology. Last but not least, we can all take action by the advocating for policies that enter global warming at the local national, international levels. 
So this including contacting officials to voice our concerns and supporting organizations that work to combat the climate change. So let us act now and make a difference. You, you guys listen to my talk today and your small actions tomorrow, they all make a difference. So on behalf of the next generation of the Earth's inhabitants, I, I want to say like thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to my speech. <laughs>